2021 is, will inventory increase as the pandemic subsides or will inventory decrease further in 2021? Which means is housing in a bubble? And that will be answered during our real estate market update for April 2021. For most people, buying a home is the biggest single purchase they ever make. Most of a family's net worth is tied up in a home. Also, housing has other effects on the economy. Booming home values contribute to a wealth effect. Is it a wonder that a $400,000 house got 122 offers in two days? It really shows the increasing insanity of our housing market. My name is Lanska Brecknell. This is our market update. And just a little plug for myself. I'm a real estate broker, but I also consult people on ADUs, which seems to be the hottest, latest thing for investors to increase their ROI and for homeowners to build extra wealth. So please subscribe to the channel if you want to keep updated on also our educational events you can find on Meetup. Let's dive into it. We usually take a look at the following real estate data points, the sales inventory numbers, interest rates, employment data, the HPSI by Fannie Mae, home builder sentiment, eviction foreclosures, forbearance. We usually talk about also affordability, which is kind of bad. Sales and inventory for March. Here we are. We have a just in the last three months. How bad or how good is it? If you own real estate, it's good for you because you made 16.3% on a median home price that is currently at Oh, actually not currently. In March, we ended at 685,000. The median home price for detached was 810,000, which is up 20.8%. If you're looking at attached only, it's 515,000 and 14% increase. The average price per square foot currently is at 481. And days on market is 24 days and uh in eight days for staying on the market so practically if you didn't see a property in the first days of its listing time you lost out pending sales are obviously up 51 percent but let's all keep it in context that was based on last year's Mar uh, march and which we all know we took a huge deep, <laughs> a deep breath when the entire COVID crisis started. The souls are practically in line. And when we look at the detached, we're up 7.8%. But we have now seen a, a huge increase in sold attached listings. Obviously, the inventory is tight in detached homes. So the overspill of the buyers go to attached. We're also now the fear of catching... Uh, the virus from touching um, a, a common doorknob um, is is also receding, and especially with the vaccines we're having. Now, the average price of a detached home is already over a million dollars. So wait, yeah. So as you can see, these prices have been leveling off at 645, 650 in the last uh, uh, look, January, um, we were there. And so currently, actually, we're not even at 701. Right now, in the middle of April, we were at 715,000. That is how our inventory of homes looks. We're, we're at 2,711, which is down 59% year over year. And we have never seen as low inventory. We came close in 2004, but will we end up in a bubble like we were in 2007 and eight? Right now, you see that the average percent of original price is 102%. Never in history has it been 
higher than that. In March, we were at 109, which already was pretty high. So you can see that there are a lot of homes closing above list price. And we have seen homes close between 5,000 to 500,000 above list. How hot is the market, the single family market? Many Americans right now also relocating for various reasons. And so they outnumber the quantity of homes for sale. So no surprise that the market responds with higher prices, sometimes far higher than it might seem justifiable. And we're not the only country. Look at uh, Germany, real estate prices, France, is kind of leveling off the uk is leveling off australia is a little bit on a comeback but look look in canada so which country is in a bubble could we be in a bubble what might have helped to create the bubble are the artificially low interest rate so i consider a bubble anything that is artificially contributing to high prices See in how the interest rates have been going down and down, and usually they go in tandem with the 10-year treasury. But if you look in the middle of 2020, the 10-year treasury was going up while still the 30-year mortgage was still staying low. Because remember what happened in 2018, we had a little interest increase and certainly real estate prices went down about 10%. So since I just mentioned 2018, when they tried to increase the interest rate, it has been going down and down and down. And just like a month ago, it's the interest rates started to inching up. Interest rates uh, looking, we're uh, looking at a 30 year fixed about 3.25. And a 15 year, 2.72, and FHA about 2.75. But considering that a 30 year fixed rate at 3% on a $750,000 loan would uh, bring a payment of 3,162. And so we're talking an average price, uh, uh, medium home price. Right, a little bit higher. So if you would be renting this house, the rent alone would be probably uh, 3,800. So if you want your current rate and your interest rate, it's, as we all know, it's depending on what type of property you're buying. And if you're an investor, if you already have 10 properties, or if you just want to add an ADU, just contact uh, Meredith over at Cost Country. We obviously cannot afford to buy a house if we don't have a job. So what are we looking at? Interest unemployment rate. Um, the politically correct one is 6.2, but the real interest rate is probably still around 11% plus some of the gig workers that are not counted are um, also are probably underemployed. So we still are on the way of improvement, but we're still not there where we were before the, um, uh, the COVID. Off to the races when it comes to job openings. And will that signal the end of a recession? So if you're looking over here, we had 7.4 million um, job openings. And as you guys see last year, it just totally crashed. But it's just not simply snapping some fingers and the um, <clears throat> labor uh, market is back to normal. how the um, colors change. So we still have a lot to do. And the Home Purchase Sentiment Index, Fannie Mae presents every month, is a composite out of six factors. Is it a good time to buy, to sell? Will home prices go up and down? Or will they um, <clears throat> mortgage rates go up and down and how people how confident are people about their income and their job 
The home um, purchase sentiment uh, increased in March by 5.2 points to 81.7. So four of the HPSI six components increased months over months, including the com uh, components related to home buying and home selling conditions, household income, and home prices. To this slide, where down here people were asked, do you think your household income was more than 12 months ago and was still down year over year, but the last months it actually increased and obviously we had a lot of uh, a lot of stimulus checks going out and we had an extension of the booster for the unemployment. And maybe people are still not simply paying um, their mortgages, so they have some other discretionary income they can spend on other stuff. But how are we looking? Speaking of not paying your mortgage, so how we're doing on foreclosures, forbearance, and eviction. We still have a kind of a K-shaped recovery for rent. So some of the markets that saw the fastest declines in 2020 are actually starting and experienced the most significant jump in 2021. So we have the large cities that are actually right now recovering. It's Boston, San Jose, Washington, Chicago, Seattle, and New York. San Francisco is still down about 23%. But who has the largest year-over-year -year rent increases? To no surprise, Boise, which also has the highest appreciation. Um, Fresno, that's a submarket from San Francisco now. Greensboro, Gilbert, Arizona, Riverside, California, Albuquerque, Tucson, and Memphis, Tennessee. We still are dealing with a eviction moratorium, which is through June 30th. So we have really not gotten any real price discovery in the residential market, nor did we see any price recovery in the commercial market as the banks are still um, trying to work out the, uh, the, the commercial real estate. On the front of forbearances, the CFPB proposed a new rule requiring all mortgage services to delay foreclosure proceedings on principal residences until after December 31st. So that would uh, affect all service lenders, not just the government-backed uh, uh, lenders. Okay. So we still have about, uh, we had 4.3 million or about 8% in June 2020. So last week the MBA found an estimated 2.5 million homeowners or about 4.9% are in forbearance, which is a pretty good decline, 42% decline. And Black Knight data indicates 3.3 million borrowers were past due or facing foreclosures at the end of February Foreclosure proceedings have begun against 168,000, which if we compare, we had about 10 million people losing their homes during the crisis. And so currently we have 3.35, but then we might be adding a, a few. But remember, we have low inventory and a lot of dry powder to uh, purchase homes from regular home buyers up to now um, life insurance and institutional buyers. And here's an argument why people say we're not in a bubble and the price increases are all justified because today we have a different situation. Those who are 33 now were born like between 1987 and 1988. So at this point, birth had been rising since the 1970s and would accelerate even further for a few uh, more years. So um, the last few years, we saw a heavy demand by, from first-time um, buyers. And this should continue for a little bit longer. So if you look at the graph, you can see um, another three or four years of rising demographics than um, a fairly slow 
decline. 33 year old, such a big number. This is the average age of, a, um, of people when they're buying homes. are not just up in the um, existing inventory it is also up at uh, in the new homes obviously the builder sentiment is up 83 all regions and in the west about 92 points which is pretty impressive and the median sales price of a new home sold in January was about 346,000 with an average sale price of 408,000. So there were about 307,000 new houses for sale at the end of December, which is about a four months supply, which brings me back to San Diego. It's uh, the um, existing home. We have a less than a month supply. We did see the building permits collapse, so which kind of tells you, uh, again, are we in a bubble or is the price increase justified because we're simply still not building any inventory. So we don't see people listing their homes and we don't see a, a, a big increase in uh, new houses either. Maybe cash is king right now. Credit score is king. So if you see that the average uh, credit score on the uh, purchases right now is at 760. So no, none of the subprime and uh, uh, fog and mirror uh, stuff going on right now in this market. Historically speaking, it cost about five times the uh, yearly income to purchase a home. And uh, when we go from like the 1960s to about 2000, then in the housing bubble, we brought, uh, we brought it up to seven times. And now we're actually at about what, uh, six, six point two. So we're on the way to seven. So will rising prices nullify affordability? So it's currently at its lowest point since nine, 2019. So, which means uh, in Los Angeles, for example, which San Diego is pretty close to the share of income required to pay a mortgage actually is about 44%. Um, and so that's eating up about 40 to 37% of the median income on average. But in cities like <laughs> Cleveland or Cincinnati, a payment, a mortgage payment still represents only about 14%. So I know you guys all pack your suitcases and move to um, Ohio. Maybe not move to Ohio, but maybe buy some rental properties there. So that's just another way of saying, hey, look at the price, home prices to average hourly earnings. And that shows you that home prices really um, are losing their affordability. See how home ownership uh, rate will develop with this insane inventory crisis as we have seen people sell their homes, not able to buy a new one, and uh, how the unemployment will recover. So a note of caution about housing due to the huge supply demand imbalance, temporarily inflated personal income, rising rates and tightening lending standards, and the end of deferred payments that combined should lead to slower activity or will it even pop the bubble? And if you'd like to learn more about real estate investing, you can't buy it, but you can build it. Uh, educational events, the third, most of the month, third Saturday. This one is on April 21st. Check out on uh, Meetup and sign up for the free events. And thank you for listening. Please subscribe, support the channel, and call me with all your real estate or ADU needs.